So I want to welcome everybody to the Internal Combustion Engines Lab here at Cal Poly Pomona. I'm Professor David Miller, and my videographer today is Dr. Paul Niesensen, also a professor here in mechanical engineering. Um, I just want to make sure that you're aware that we are in the middle of a COVID pandemic. Um, as such, all of these videos, and there are several, are going to be shot with masks on with appropriate distancing. Um, right now, uh, Professor Niesensen is a good 30 feet away from me and we're keeping our distance and briefly i just wanted to show you who i am and what my face looks like uh, but now what we're going to do is we're going to start the actual lab tour so on goes the mask and let's begin just by looking at the interior portion and then we'll move outside and look at the rest of the lab so this is the engines lab um, technically it's the energy systems lab um, up until a few years ago we had a steam power plant that was part of this lab um, there are different devices and systems in here associated with different lab experiments. Um, we're just going to talk about those associated with the engines portion of the lab. Um, so I'm just going to kind of walk you through. Um, first, I would just note that we have a distributor tester over here. Um, so this is a device that we're going to use in order to test out the performance of a typical distributor. Um, as we continue walking through, this is our CFR engine. The CFR engine is a one cylinder governed engine. It's governed to 600 RPM and it's designed for determining octane numbers for fuels. Although we also use it to determine a, a typical pressure versus volume trace for an actual engine. You know, that's not gonna be the same as the ideal auto cycles that you learned about in your thermodynamics classes. So this is our CFR engine. Um, by the way, I would note that much of the equipment here in this lab is rather old, but you know, we do have some new things that we're slowly trying to bring into the fold, if you will. Um, we also have a couple of cutaways. Um, this is a cutaway of a V8 engine that's actually motor operated. So that's a good learning and teaching tool. Um, we've got a cutaway of a one cylinder Briggs and Stratton engine. So this is another good teaching tool as students are trying to figure out how engines work. Um, we also have um, some engines that operate like real engines, if you will. Um, first of all, this is a setup that we were trying to get ready for this semester, um, this semester being 2021 in the spring, um, dynamite brand dynamometer. Um, then we have a Honda engine, um, but the pandemic sent us all home last March and we've never been able to get this thing set up, but that'll be part of the lab eventually. Um, right here is our newest operating system. Um, we have a, another Honda engine, uh, again, a one cylinder four stroke. And this one actually has an electric dynamometer associated with it. Um, so this is a very modern engine and a modern dyno. In fact, this dyno is not specifically designed for um, internal combustion engines. It's really designed more for electric motors and for testing out things like wind turbines and rotors on drones and that kind of stuff. Um, so maybe someday we'll get this hooked up to something, you know, a little more modern than an internal combustion engine. Um, as we continue to move through, um, this is our Superflow dynamometer. And this is actually used in conjunction with the Chevy V8 engine. Um, many of our engines are actually outside on the other side of bulletproof glass. And then we operate them from inside for safety purposes. So that's a Chevy V8. Um, this is actually not part of the engines lab. It's called the Rankine Cycler, and it's all about steam turbine power. Um, here's the console for our Cummins diesel engine. So the Cummins diesel is right outside. That's an inline six turbocharged diesel. And this is the console. Um, unfortunately, even though the diesel engine is relatively new, the dynamometer that we use for it is actually quite old. So you can clearly see that the instrumentation is somewhat old, although we've replaced certain components with more modern gauges. Um, but much of the equipment is on the old side. Okay. And now we're going to walk outside and see what's going on. Um, I might note that there's a lot of junk around here now. You know, unfortunately, this is our largest space in the ME department. And as such, um, as we're under COVID restrictions, um, we're using this for storage. A lot of things come in and we can't distribute them to the various labs because nobody's around. Um, so things are in disarray and you can see that as we come outside here. I mean, there's just so much stuff around that unfortunately is in the way. Um, we've got our 
fireproof cabinets for keeping our various fuels. We've got our uh, fireproof waste disposal for oily and gasoline soaked rags. Um, as we come outside here, um, you know, we can see our Honda engine with the electric dyno. Um, you know, here's our Chevy V8 right next to that. Um, of course, Cal Poly uh, traditionally has had a pretty good program um, in associate with, association with SAE. So here's one of our old formula cars. I have no idea why it's parked out here, but it is. Um, here's our Cummins diesel. Um, and then around behind us, uh, we also have a Briggs and Stratton, the one cylinder Briggs and Stratton engine experiment. And this is hooked up to a very old um, water brake dynamometer. Uh, Go Power is the brand name, Go Power Dyno. Um, so that's another experiment that we have. And then I think the last thing to show out here is our cooling system. Um, you know, we don't just use city water and then dump it once it's picked up heat. Um, we have a recirculating cooling loop. So we've got this cooling tower and this cooling tower is hooked up to a water distribution system, um, which is then designed to you know, provide cooling water for the engines, as well as to provide water, including cooling capacity for the various water brake dynamometers. And then I guess I should also note that um, this particular lab was designed in the late 1990s. I, I participated in that process. Um, this building is building 17. It sits on top of where building 11 used to be. Um, so we have it designed with actually six engine bays um, we've got six bulletproof glass windows. The, the idea is that someday um, we'll have six engines that could all be operated from inside. The engines will all operate outside along the wall. Um, you can see the piping for the cooling water system also along the wall. So we're, we're set up for some big things in the future, um, but unfortunately things are not happening right now. Nonetheless, this is just a brief walkthrough of the engines lab. Um, with each lab experiment video that's being created, we'll get a little more detail as to the nature of the engines and the dynamometers and you know the other equipment and how it's used here in the labs.